Hello, engineering student. At this point in time, you should have your design of your puzzle cube totally completed. So this sheet that you see in front on the screen, you should have your five parts, A, B, C, D, all completely figured out along with your paper prototype like you see here. So you should have this done and this paper prototype totally complete. Uh, you'll need these two steps in order to create your 3D models. So let me show you my 3D models. So here is my Puzzle Cube A. Okay, so I want you to see that. And you should have all of your puzzle pieces uh, totally 3D modeled and complete before starting this particular video lesson. This video lesson is going to show you how to create this. This is an assembly of your puzzle cube in the 3D space. Okay, so our end goal is to get here where we create a technical drawing showing an exploded view and the assembly view of the puzzle cube. So if you have not finished making all of your puzzle pieces in Autodesk Inventor, that's the first step before you continue in this video lesson. However, if you do have all five of your puzzle pieces 3D modeled, like you see here, I have A, B, C, D, E, okay, you should uh, continue in this video lesson once you have all of them totally done. And you also should have, let me open up the drawing for one of the parts, puzzle part B. Let that open up. Okay, so here's my puzzle part B technical drawing. So you should have a technical drawing for all five puzzle parts. So once you're there, we're going to go here. We're going to make this puzzle cube assembly. So to get started for your assembly, click on new assembly. And you're going to see a place button on the far top left. If it doesn't say place, it might say something else here. It should say place. Click place. In the file uh, finder, find your puzzle pieces. They should be automatically there. You can do this one at a time um, or all at the same time. If you're going to do it one at a time, click on one part. Well, click on your first part, part A, and then click open. Let me zoom out here. You're going to see your piece show up in the workspace and you're going to click one time and one time only and then press escape on the keyboard and click place and move on. If you want to do all of them at the same time, click on one of them, hold shift, uh, click on the last one and it should select all of them in a row like that. This only works if you have saved all of your puzzle parts in the same folder uh, at the same, you know, you finish them all at the same time and they're all there. Click open. You're going to see all of your pieces in one little bunch. You're going to click one time and press escape. Now this looks kind of messy. So let me make sure escape is pressed. So you can click and drag them around and you'll see let me zoom out a little bit. You'll see all of your puzzle pieces in one space. So this is our assembly space. We're going to assemble them. Before you move on assembling your components, you need to understand some basic assembly constraints. An assembly constraint defines how parts relate to each other, and it restricts the movement <clears throat> between parts. There's something known as six degrees of freedom that we're going to explore here. So there are three rotational degrees of freedom about the X, Y, and Z axis and three translational along the X, Y, and Z axis. A degree of freedom uh, can be systematically removed in an assembly until each component is constrained to allow the desired behavior. This is going to make a lot more sense in the next few slides. There's four basic constraints in Autodesk Inventor. You have mate slash flush, an angle, tangent, and insert constraint. A mate constraint will constrain two faces, edges, points, or axes together. So you'll see if we have two cubes right here, these little up arrows, if you have them both facing up 
and you mate them together, they're going to stick together like you see here in this example. A flush constraint will constrain two faces, edges, points, or work features together side by side. So it'll put them all on the same side by side uh, plane. An angle constraint, you can constrain uh, faces or edges and angle to one another. You can define that angle. A tangent constraint constrains curves to a, another curved surface or to another flat surface. And an insert constraint where you can insert pins, cylinders into holes. So the first component placed in an assembly should be the fundamental part or a subassembly. And the first component in the assembly file sets the orientation or subs of subsequent parts and subassemblies. A grounded component will stay grounded. It will kind of get locked into place. So when the first component is placed in the assembly, its origin is coincident and aligned with the assembly coordinate or origin. Base component should be grounded to remove all degrees of freedom. We're going to ground our first component so you'll see that it won't move around. Um, we'll talk about all of this other stuff much later on. So my first component that I put in um, was the A part. If you put them all in at the same time, that's okay. What you want to do is um, when you put your mouse over a part, you'll see on the left side here, it'll actually highlight that part. So this is part A. If I right click on it, there's going to be a button that says grounded. I'm going to go ahead and click on grounded. And now, I'm going to press escape. If I try to move this, I can't. It gets locked into place. And that's a good thing. Now I need to find... Where is this? So this is where this comes into play. This is very important. This is going to help me see where my parts line up and fit together. So A is over here. And I see in my first layer, look at the first layer, my C component, my C part, that is in the top layer there. So that's going to help me figure out how to mate, flush, or constrain those parts. So that's part C and part A. They touch each other. So I'm going to click constrain here and this menu is going to pop up and here's where I showed you in that presentation mate angle tangent and insert there's also symmetry so with mate you can see here the two two little images showing you how they get made it together the blue block and the yellow block they get stuck together and then this is a flush I like using flush and mate most of the time and I'm going to be using the flush for this one. So this is the top of the puzzle cube. You can kind of see that little arrow that's showing when you hover over it. So that arrow changes direction depending on the surface that you're on. See that? So I want to flush the tops. So I'm going to click the top of A and now I need to kind of spin the world around. This is the top of what component is that? C. So I'm going to click that and you'll see it spin around. See how it moved it? It also made a sound. Click home. Okay, so now they're, they're exactly what I need them to be. So I'm going to click apply. Close that. I'm going to move this around and kind of play with it and see, all right, this is exactly what it should look like. Now I need to constrain it further so that it gets locked into place. I'm going to click on this side. And this is going to be way different for you depending on your puzzle parts. I'll click flush, click this side and this side. And now that is flushed to that. And then I'm going to flush the other side right here. I'm going to click flush, flush, and apply. Close that. And now you'll see, oh, click home, zoom in. Now you'll see that those two puzzle pieces are locked together. I can't move them. They're totally constrained with each other. Just like here, you can see in the first layer, there's my part A, part C. Now this part E goes right here. Let me figure that out. 
Uh, so I got to kind of move my world around so I can see. All right, so this this side right here. Well, let me let me go ahead and flush the top. I think that's the top. Yeah, so constrain flush with the red. Yep, fly flush this side and this side. Yeah, there we go. That's right. Apply, flush, apply. So we're literally building our puzzle cube in the 3D space. And notice I'm, I'm only using flush for this. Um, you can also use mate. Let me use mate in the next example. So after my green part, uh, what's under it? This purple part, which is part B. Okay, let me click home so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I want to mate this part with this part right here. I'm going to click that. I'm going to click the inside part right there. Spin the world around and click this part right there. And now that has mated. Um, and it's going to get, you know, I'm going to move it around. But you'll see that it's it's stuck there. It's stuck on that surface because they're mated together. Let me click constrain. I'm going to flush it to this surface. And then I'm going to apply. And then I actually I should mate this surface with this inside surface. Apply. I hope this makes sense. So you can kind of think of it like magnets, right? You're, you're programming it and telling it to constrain in a way that if it was magnetized, it would all click in place and get stuck there. Uh, let me see, where does this one go? I think this goes, yeah, yep. I'm gonna click constrain, flush, bottom, bottom, apply. I'm gonna flush this side with this side. Apply and flush this side with this side. Apply. And there it is, my assembled puzzle cube. So what do I do with this once it's totally assembled? We are going to obviously save it. So let me save mine. I'm gonna name it puzzle cube assembly underscore my initials save it and then go ahead and export it as a PDF and export it save and you'll send me your PDF to prove that you were able to do this um, we're going to use this assembly in the next assignment